Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bright Founders Talk at Temi. Temi is an international software development company that designs, builds, and delivers software for sustainable businesses and promising startups. My name is Matthew, and I'm excited today to be joined by Mr. Sebastian Harung, who is the co-founder at a company called Cameo, amongst other things. Uh, Sebastian, how are you today? Uh, thank you. I'm really, really good. And you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Sebastian, before we get into all the dirty questions, would you mind telling our viewers a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Sure. So, um, and I'm looking forward to all the dirty questions. Um, uh, and, and so I'm a Norwegian background from uh, investment banking in, in Oslo, in Norway. Uh, and then I, I founded Cameo as soon 10 years ago uh, during parental leave. So I'm also into the kids business, you can say. Uh, I used to play football before I went into investment banking, but the hardest yet is still, uh, I think, to be a father. So I have a total of five kids in my portfolio. So uh, that's a big challenge, but also great fun. Absolutely. That's terrific. So Sebastian, let's start at the beginning. Um, I'm going to work some of those things in through the course of this. Uh, you said you started off playing football, professional, semi-professional. What were you into? Yes. Well, I mean, we're talking Norwegian football. So that's a big question if you can ever call that professional, but it was a semi-professional. And so we, it was in the, um, in the Norwegian league. And then uh, I had an offer to go professional. Now we're talking quite a few years back. But at that time, they didn't want to combine that with education. So I was going to take my master's degree in finance and, and play football. But they said, ah, you need to be a professional football player. You can play poker, but you can't go to school. And um, I made a decision that I wanted to pursue my my, my financial education. And I, I, I took my master's degree in, in Copenhagen. I know that now that they encourage you know people in sports to do both both education and, and sports. But back then it was kind of, you should be only focused on one thing, which is a bit annoying because I think I could have done a decent career, but uh, I made my choice and I, I have to stand by that. I appreciate that. It must've been a pretty uh, difficult decision. I mean, uh, football is something you do because you're passionate about it. Um, I don't know how much passion is involved in investment banking. What was that like for you? I mean, that's a life-changing choice right there. Yeah, I mean, and you're absolutely right. Football is is passion and and it's great fun. And I, I somehow I, I sometimes I regret, but at the same time, you kind of see that you know in the long term, uh, maybe it's better to focus on getting education and and getting a nice job. And uh, I wouldn't say investment banking is passion. It's more hard work. It's clearly a good way of learning finance and how the industry works. But it was a lot of work. So I got used to putting up the alarm at two in the morning to get to, to work. Uh, and I did that for a number of years, but I, I, I thought at the end, you know, this is great. We're making um, the, the investment bank richer and everything is focused on, you know, get earning income. And like I couldn't, I, I wouldn't find, you know, passion or motivation over long term, just trying to maximize, you know, return for the, for the company. So that was the problem that I, I, I was not passionate enough about that that lifestyle and that work situation. Absolutely. So you were there for, for a while. And then what happened through that? What did that lead into the investment banking? What was your next step? Well, uh, then uh, kids stuff started happening and, and you got another kind of um, idea of how the world works. There's more things that are um, important. And then I read about a new concept in uh, The Economist. Uh, I read about a new concept coming in, in the UK about um, uh, ways of getting finance to smaller businesses outside of the traditional banking investment banking model and that that was uh, it was about a company called funding circle uh, and and that got me really really curious so i i decided actually to, to you know to to dig a little bit deeper i resigned uh from the investment bank and i um i had some other jobs during parental or to get my parental leave and, and all that but i then started to writing a, a business plan of taking this concept of alternative finance to Scandinavia. So I got the ID from a company in the UK and I thought this is actually going to work in Scandinavia and I'll, I'll rather be an entrepreneur and a founder than, than actually, you know, making a lot of money in the investment bank, which I probably could if I'd stayed, but I didn't. So 
you made this choice. You said um, the kids had come along. So this was after you had uh, your children or you had some some of your children. I'm not sure you didn't mention how many. And then you had to make a choice. Now you're going to leave that job with the security and the regular paycheck and all of that and start something for yourself. That's another massive decision to make. You had to be very sure um, that you could make that work. You have a lot of responsibility. I mean, I'm happy to be Norwegian because, I mean, if something would go wrong in Norway, there's always a safety net. So I, I felt, I never felt nervous about not, uh, you know, being able to, to to pay my bills or anything like that. But at the same time, I, I, I regretted quitting football. So I really wanted to, you know, to make something happen this time. And I didn't want to look back and stop. So I just wanted to go ahead and, and, um, I think the, the major decision point was I met uh, an, a senior investor who had been working a little bit with my dad, and and he he kind of you know he he liked my my idea, my pitch, and he said, "All right, I don't want you to starve. I want you to have a salary, so I'll chip in what we need for your salary, and then we start working um, and see if we can find uh, find the the problem in the beginning was the, the the regulation. So he said, okay, he will pay for lawyers, he will pay for my salary, so we can actually pursue this uh, opportunity together. And he was uh, extremely kind. Uh, he actually, because I sold my apartment, I had I didn't have any other you know cash or equity to invest in a company. So he he, he lent me an apartment so I could stay. And uh, he's kind of the the main reason that we that I started basically. When I, when I, after writing the business plan and so on. Tell us about the beginning. What sort of yes. things happened? Yes. You know, you must have faced a few challenges. You mentioned lawyers. Was it a, a rough start or? Yes. I mean, it was a rough start because I had an idea to take a concept from the UK. It was quite, it was quite common at that time that, I mean, this is called, it's called alternative finance or it's called crowd lending or P2P lending. It has evolved massively the last couple of years, but in the beginning, it was quite big in the UK. It was quite big in the US. It was huge in China. Uh, this concept of having small savers or pension funds invest directly to small uh, and medium-sized companies, so you, you go outside the bank. Uh, we didn't have that in, in Scandinavia, and, and particularly uh, we had a few, or in Norway, there was nothing, and we had a few starting to, to evolve in Denmark and, and Sweden our neighboring countries. The problem in, in Norway is that the, the regulation within finance is based on really old regulations. And uh, I don't want to get too technical, but we have something called the EU, which is quite a good institution in, in Europe. But Norway Norway is outside of the EU, but we pay to get access. Uh, but that means also that the Norwegian uh, government can keep some rules uh, and regulations not in line with the rest of Europe, basically. So we had to... Uh, tried to solve that uh, in the beginning, and, and that was hard, hard work. Uh, not really, you know, being backed by the, the the government in Norway. They kind of said, "We don't want this concept. We believe in the banks, which clearly did not fund uh, small companies enough." So that was a really a big uh, challenge. We spent a year, I guess, and a year and a half trying to figure out how to start the company, and then in the end, we had to start it in Denmark and Sweden because it didn't work in Norway. That was a bit of a challenge for me privately because I had, you know, I lived in in Norway, I had a young daughter, uh, and then I started moving to, to Stockholm in Sweden to make this work. And then one thing is the regulation, but also then you needed to, to raise equity because we had limited amount of funding. Uh, so I spent tremendous amount of time traveling to meet potential investors and, and you know, pitch the idea, uh, can we get you along? And then traveling back and forth to be with my daughter and and uh, and so on. So that was a that was an interesting uh, time of my my career. I ended up moving to Stockholm, uh, and my ex girlfriend moved to to Iceland. And I um, I had to um, had a really small apartment in Stockholm that I rented. I could I could you know walk out of the shower and then open the refrigerator at the same you know same time. So it was really like a like a founder's um, experience um, working in Stockholm and trying to build up something with really limited capital. So I had to work like the the, the, the investment banking hours. That was uh, something I was dreaming about because now it was even more. And we were so young that you had to do, and so few, so you had to do every task yourself um, in the team. 
Wow, so quite a learning curve there, a lot of new things. And again, another situation where you had to make a personal sacrifice on a degree so that you could see this through. What about, um, t- tell us a little bit about the, the funding. Tell us about approaching people, you know, pitching your idea, convincing people to invest in you. There must have been a few situations there that taught you, uh, you know, something about yourself. Absolutely. And this, when I, when I finally write my book about Cameo, then um, I'm going to spend a few chapters on, on this these air part. Because in the beginning, we attracted kind of small um, private, um, you know, high net worth or an- angel investors. And then you, you build building relationship with each and, and every one of them. And I remember I'd been, I've been to many dinners where you, you, you come in and we said, okay, can you maybe invest a uh, hundred thousand uh, pounds or euros in, in us? That's kind of the, so it's kind of small amounts, but it takes a lot of time to get them across. And I've been to dinners where we had, I, I sat at the table for five hours before I could actually eat because they were asking so many questions. And then you had to, you know, explain and and finance is is highly regulated. So it's it's you know people are a bit scared to to invest in, but they know also that their potential is quite big. But I think the funniest or the funniest of the, the the like the, the largest uh, found funding rounds and and that I thought were really really exciting for us is when when we hired an investment bank uh, to say okay you need to help us raise and we decided on going for. Uh, f- four million euros, approximately, and they said, "Yeah, okay, we, you know, we signed an agreement." They were starting to 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 put me up with different uh, investors, and and then when I met the large investors in Norway, the the question was always that I was met with was I said, "We're seeking four million euros in Norwegian. That's forty million kroner." When I asked for forty million, they always said, "It's it's too small for Norwegian investors. It's we we're looking to invest more." So what? we were, it's what? a bit, you know, yeah. ironic that you, you can't get funding because <laughs> you're asking for too little, because uh, they're normally they invest in shipping and oil and gas is huge contracts. So we were like off the rate a little bit, but then the investment banker, they, they asked me, but why, why aren't we investing in you? Uh, I mean, we, we are working with the large co- corporations, the large investors, we have no offer for the, the smaller ones. We like your idea of, you know, making this attractive investment opportunity or product for small savers. You can start with really small amounts and build portfolios. So the first funding round ended with the investment bank that we hired to find funding that they actually did all the investments themselves. So it became a subsidiary of the investment bank, basically. Wow, that's that's very, uh, very cool. And then I think, yeah, that was a great experience and, and fun- tremendous for us that that they came in because it, it created a you know trust and, and reputation uh, situation that we never had before when you had like a really like the largest investment bank in Scandinavia actually owning a third of your company and then the next next large funding round we did then um, that then um, a close relative just been uh, admitted to the hospital I was a bit stressed and I was going to have a, a, a teams meeting with the new potential investor it was during covid so i was at home i didn't have to be honest i only had my shirt on i didn't have you know i had my my no pants on i was just rushed from hospital straight and, and then i prepared my slides you know when you when you're an investment banker you used to have like a million of slides and blah 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 numbers and figures and i was starting out on, on my presentation and the, and the, the investor said i don't want to see i've seen slides before i don't want to see any slides Tell me about you. And I told him for four mil, for, for uh, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes about my upbringing, which is in a neighborhood, multicultural neighborhood in, in Oslo, not where the, the rich bankers live, exact opposite. It's a working class environment. And I told him about that and why I really wanted to, to, to run Cameo as a company where we give opportunities to everyone to invest, not just the rich. And after like talking about that for 15 minutes, he said, all right, I invest. And then he invested like 4 million euros on that 15 minute pitch about me. And uh, sitting there with, with no lens on. No pass, no, <laughs> no slides. Just telling about why I'm passionate about this, this startup. Yeah, that was amazing. It's incredible. 
would you mind if we if we spoke a little bit about um, bringing people on board? So you've gone through a lot to get to this point. A cameo is running. You're getting um, funding in. Now you've got to build. You have to build a team around you. Can you tell us a bit about acquiring talent, building a good team? Yes, sure. And I I I would like to I'm open to say that I'm I'm super proud and, ha- and happy of the team that we have today. We have so many great talents that have actually been there for from oh, well, many people have been there maybe four or five years already and becoming experienced within our concept and, and our company and I have so I've had the you know the privilege to have really really good people uh, along with me and my father always says that if you want to be a successful founder you, you should make sure you, you recruit people that, that are smarter and as ambitious as I am so so we have smarter people than myself and and we're all driven by this you know entrepreneurial spirit that, that we want to create something we want to do good and create something that, that was you know my experience being an investment banker that you can't money alone is not enough you need to care about what you do and you need to care about the customers you need to care about the uh, so what we are doing is we are helping property developers create homes, much needed homes in Scandinavia. And we find them efficient uh, funding that banks don't do. So it's a really good feeling for the team. So when we recruit, we want to find someone that fits into that, uh, you know, and have that passion or the entrepreneurial spirit. And we give everyone in the team uh, options so they become part of the journey that we do. And I think that's that's really key. When it came to recruiting in the beginning, I've done all the mistakes that you can do. I recruited wrong people. They didn't, you know, like to work the the way you have to work as a founder or as an entrepreneur. So we have had some changes in the beginning. We we set the core team, uh, and then we're been luckily to have that core team stable for 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 years now. But it's I think it's really hard to recruit because I get I get really enthusiastic quickly, and if someone is you know full of energy in the interview, then I'm yeah, let's go. <laughs> So that's why I I don't really I need to have someone with me to do the recruitment and to to ask the you know the difficult questions. Somebody who's take the got a level head and can manage your own excitement. It sounds like <laughs> that's true. Yes, and I've done the. My best friend is he's the he's responsible for recruiting, and his uh, his background is the Norwegian Army. Wow, so okay. that's the level head. Okay, so he doesn't take any nonsense. These are the lines. This is it, square. <laughs> nice. Sebastian, I have one more for you before we, we finish off. Um, without giving away any industry secrets, can you tell us a bit about your vision for the future? Yeah, so our vision is that, or the simple vision is that we would like everyone to have an opportunity to invest in projects that matter. For us, that means that it shouldn't be just for the you know the rich people uh, everyone should be able to save and, and invest in, in savings that you know help them get a good pension and, and, and so on. But we also want the, the investments to be good, to be nice. Uh, it's not enough just to get a high return. You should also contribute to a problem and help solving a problem in society. And for us, uh, that's two things. One is that we, we need a lot more houses in, in Scandinavia. We're getting thousands of refugees every week and, and we're you know, growing, we are, so we need more homes. So we, we help fund that. And also we need more en- energy efficient uh, homes. That's really, really important for me because when I get the electricity bill every month, I realize that I should spend less and we need to encourage for housing that are m- much more energy efficient. Uh, that's what we want. We want everyone in, in Scandinavia to be able to invest in these projects, to get a safe and, and strong return, uh, but also do good help building the, the, the houses that we need. So what does that mean? I mean, that's kind of a little bit flurry vision that everyone should be able to invest. So so we want to make uh, our company develop into a platform that is uh, accessible for everyone to invest in, in these projects. And we will be, we are, you know, the ambition is to become a platform for 1 million customers in Scandinavia's population, 20 million. And, uh, and we want to become the largest platform in our uh, region for non-listed investments because we're not going to do you know listed stocks on the in the stock markets it's just going to be these projects that we do outside of the stock market so we want to be the largest platform from that and uh, and we want to have a lot more products than we have today but 
So we have today one product, which is you invest in a loan, you get monthly return. Uh, that's just the beginning, but we want to build that into a, a huge platform for financing of uh, real estate and small uh, and medium-sized companies in Scandinavia. And then we want everyone to be able to invest in that. So it could be my mom, it could be my grandmother, it could be my kid. Everyone can log in easily and then save money, get a good return and then help do good. That's fantastic. I like that. I like the fact that you've um, tied in a humanitarian need for this as well. And, you know, providing homes, providing better electricity, these are, and giving people a return on their investment. These are all things that will benefit um, people in the long run. So good for you. I think that's um, very noble. And uh, obviously we wish you um, all the success with that. Sebastian, before I let you go, is there anything you would like to tell our viewers and our listeners um, about Cameo, maybe where they can get hold of you? Is there any, anything I might have missed over that you think is relevant? It's always a good question. I mean, they can always check out our website, uh, Cameo with a K and not uh, .com because Microsoft owns that. It's an old game. We've been trying to purchase it from Microsoft, but uh, it's not for sale. Uh, and the, everything will be in Scandinavian languages, but you can easily Google Translate. But I, I think that, that what I would like to say is not necessarily linked with Cameo, but I think it's so important. You spend so many hours at work. So if you have a passion, something you know burning inside that you really want to start, then you should start. Uh, it's never a bad experience to start something, even if it fails. The jury is still out there for us. We're doing, you know, we're improving, but still we are barely uh, making money. So we need, we have a lot of things that we need to deliver on going forward. But it, the feeling of creating something uh, on your own, that's, it's amazing. And it, it goes to, if you want to start as an entrepreneur yourself or where you actually work. So if you work in a boring bank and you're just doing, you know, paper moving back and forth, I would really consider finding an exciting job uh, and help create the brighter future that we can all, you know, contribute to. That's fantastic. Sebastian, I want to say thank you so much for today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and um, we'll be keeping our eye on you in the future. Thank you very much.